Welcome back. In this video, we will have a look at iterating through a list and searching through a list. We will create a mini program to search for a person's name within a list. This is computer science at school.com. I'm Jason Machin. Let's get started. So looking at iterating through a list, before I start with it, iterating through the list, I'll just show you how this works with uh, a variable, a normal string. So let's say if I create a string and give that the value of watch, I can then create a for loop and I can do for i in uh, my word and then, oops, and then if I print i, we will see that it goes through each letter of that variable one at a time. So each letter of watch is printed one line at a time. So basically it's inspecting each of these letters as individuals. Now we can do the same as that with lists. Um, if I just comment this out, so this time I can use um, my list, uh, sorry I can use uh, for i in my list and then I can print i. I run this. So here we can see it's gone through this list one item at a time. So that's the for i in method. Now we can use for i in range. So we could do, um, let me put this here. We could do for i in in range. I can give the range. So for example, I can say five because the list contains five elements and then print. Now when we're doing in the range, I would need to do my list position of i. Now remember the first iteration through this for loop, i will be worth zero and then one, two, three, etc. So here I'm printing list position of i and that is being iterated. So we'll, we'll get exactly the same outcome. Uh, watch book seven, etc, etc. Now if, for example, I go out of the range of the list, this is one thing I suggested in the last video, and run this again, we get this error saying we've gone out of range of the list. Um, another method of doing this, we could do, for example, for i in range of the length of, the, uh, of my list. For the length of my list. Um, now, just to show you here, if I do print len my list um, and run this, then we can see here it's printed 5, which is the length of the list, and which means this value here will be 5, so effectively we're doing for i in range of 5. Okay, so next I'm going to move on to create a small program to search for a name within a list. I've commented this uh, code out so we can start fresh and I will create a variable name called student names. So I will then ask the user what name they want to find in the list. We'll then do a for loop and an if statement to see if we can find that name in the list. As we go on, we'll build on the program, so it'll start with a lot of errors and uh, gaps that if the user types something unexpected in, it may crash the program, but we'll, we'll build up so it works uh, in a nice, neat little mini program. So if I create a, um, a list, if I can spell student names equals, and then a list, I have some names here. Okay, so we have six elements in this list. And then another variable to ask the user what name they want to search for. So I can call this anything I want. I'll call it search, then input. Um, please enter the name you want to look for. Again, any appropriate message there for the user. Then I want to iterate through each index within this list to see if this input can be found. So I can use any of the methods I showed you before, but I'm going to use the for i in range of the length of student names. 
student names, close two brackets because I open two bra brackets. And then what I want to say is if uh, the search is equal to uh, student names position of I, so if search, which is the uh, item the user typed in, is equal to um, student names position I, and I'll put this in brackets, um, then what do I want to do? Let's print, print um, yes, that name is in the, in the list. I'm struggling to type today. Let's spell these correct in the list and yes. Okay. And then for now, let's just do an else. So else um, print um, that name is not in the list. Okay. Let's see if this works so far. What name are you looking for? We're looking for Dave. No, that is not in the list. No, that is not in the list. No, that is not in the list. Okay, so this is good. So the first one, we can see it said, yes, it's in the list. And then the reason why it printed again and again and again is because it's not stopped doing it. It said yes when it found it in the first position, but it then looked in the second position and then said, no, it's not in the list, the third, the fourth, etc. So what I want to do here is once it's found that, once it's got to this condition where it's found it in the list, I can simply break. And this will then break this if statement. Um, now we have an issue for if the name is not in the list. So let's just run this again. And um, what name are you looking for? Let's say we're looking for Bob. And again, this will print multiple times because the name is not in the list. So we need to do something similar to this. However, we can't use the break statement here because if we break, it would break this sequence on the first iteration. So for example, I typed in Bob, Bob is not in the list, so it would go to this else and then it would break. So what we want to say is that if we are at the end of the list and we've not found the name, then we want to end it. So I can change this to an else if. So then I can say uh, else if I is equal to the length of the list so len of student names and again this won't quite work yet then we want to print uh, the name is not in in the list we don't want to print this until we've checked every element of the list now we'll see this still will not quite work um, so let's say we're looking for Bob Okay, so Bob wasn't in the list yet, it didn't print that. This is because I never got to the value of the length of the list. Um, let me, if I just put two print statements in here to show you what's happening. So the list length and then the value of I. So th this print statement here will print the length of the list and each time this loop goes through, it will print the value of i, which is here. So if I run again, oops, my indentation. So these go back one, back and back, and run again. And again, search for Bob. Now here we can see the list length is six, um, but as the value of i changes, it changes three, four, five. i never actually gets to six because i starts at zero. So here I need to do for the length of student names minus one. I can remove this now. That was just to show you the values. So if I do uh, else, if i is equal to the length of student names minus one, which means else must be at the stage of Anna here, if I run that again now, hopefully when I type in Bob this time, it will just say once that name is not in the list. Okay, good. Um, so next thing, let's say for example, we want to look at 
um, the user typing something unexpected in. So um, if I run this and type in Dave, but the list here starts with title case. So each letter starts with an, each word starts with an uppercase letter. So if I type Dave or lowercase, that does not match this Dave. So therefore we get, we get the, um, that, that name is not in the list. So what I can do here, so when the user types in, I can say, change all of these to title case. So that will change the user's input, so the first letter is title. So if I try the same scenario again now, and I type Dave with a lowercase d, and enter, yes, that name is in the list. Okay, looking good. What I'm going to do now is add, would you like to uh, search for another name? Um, so, Create another variable called find, and I'm going to make that equal true. Now, true is a command word, and there's true and there's false, um, both starting with a cap capitals. And on mine, you can hear, you can see the um, highlight in orange. And I'm creating this so I can start my while loop. So I can say while find is equal to true then do this. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to add an option for the user to search again or drop out of the program. Um, if they choose to search again, then I'll keep while at true. If they say no, they don't want to search again, I'll change while to false, which will drop us out of this loop. Okay, so this is now inside this while loop. So if I highlight all of this and then press tab, that indents the entire block of code together. Um, so is the name in the list and the name's not in the list? After it's checked the name in the list, I want to ask the user if they want to, ser if they want to search again. So I can call this search again, sensible variable name, then input, um, would you like to search for another name question? Ooh, I'll give the user a prompt here to say yes or no. And then I can say, if search again is equal to, um, I will do lowercase here, and then I will change uh, the user's input to lowercase. So if um, search again is equal to yes, and I'm also going to add another option. Um, so let's say the user types in Y, or they may type in yes. So or search again is equal to again lowercase yes. Missed the speech mark. Okay, so and then here I'm going to change this to all lowercase. Because here I am comparing to only lowercase values, if I change the user's input to all lowercase, then this should match. Okay, so if search again is equal to Y or search again equals yes, then I want to run the program again. So here I can just, if I put a print statement in, um, just so I can see if it's getting to this part of the program, I'm just going to put okay. And then I can say find, equals true. Now, I actually, at this stage, don't actually need to put find equals true um, because it does equal true unless I say it equals false. However, just so I can see what's going on in, with the program in this stage, then I will put find equals true. If I put an else here, and then I can, so if they haven't said yes, then I can say uh, a print, um, okay, uh, bye then. And then I need to make find equal false. So this find equals false will end this while loop and, and finish the program and end the program. Um, so let's have a look where we're at now. Okay, I can see one more problem with this. I will run anyway. Um, so let's say we search for Dave. Yes, Dave is in the list. Would you like to search 
for another name, yes. Um, now, the problem is, is that because I didn't put this statement, please enter the name inside that loop, it's not asking me to enter the name again. So, I now need to cut this and place that inside this while loop. So when the user says yes, they want to search again, it goes back up to the while loop and then asks the user um, to enter a new name. Um, I think we are looking good. So if I run again, okay, what name are you looking for? I'm looking for Bob. Bob is not in the list. Would you like to search for another name? Yes, um, I'm looking for uh, let's say Jenny and yes that name is in the list would you like to search again no and okay bye then okay that concludes this video in the next video we'll look at some methods such as appending adding to a list and deleting the list and this code I will drop in computerscienceatschool.com if you have any comments or questions then please feel free to ask